A blessed day to all of you, sisters and brothers, and to those who join us in worship through this live stream at the Diocesan Shrine of Jesus the Divine Word in Christ the King Mission Seminary, Quezon City. Today is Thursday of the fourth week of Lent. Our Mass presider is Reverend Father Louis Punzalan SVD. Our celebration will now begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear friends in Christ, the Gospel reading for today is part of the so-called trial of Jesus. In front of the Jewish leaders during his time, our Lord describes and defends his divine origin. But the Jewish leaders accuse him of blasphemy. You were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. We invoke your mercy in humble prayer, O Lord, that you may cause us, your servants, corrected by penance and schooled by good works, to persevere sincerely in your commands and come safely to the Paschal festivities. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once to your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, for they have become depraved. They have soon turned aside from the way I pointed out to them, making for themselves a molten calf and worshipping it, sacrificing to it and crying out, This is your God, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I see how stiff-necked this people is. Let me alone then, that my wrath may blaze up against them, to consume them. Then I will make you a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord, his God, saying, Why, O Lord, should your wrath blaze up against your own people? 
whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with such great power and with so strong a hand. Why should the Egyptians say, with evil intent, he brought them out, that he might kill them in the mountains and exterminate them from the face of the earth? Let your blazing wrath die down. Relent in punishing your people. Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and how you sort to them by your own self, saying, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and all this land that I promise, I will give your descendants as their perpetual heritage. So the Lord relented in the punishment. He had threatened to inflict on his people the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Our fathers made a calf in Horeb and adored a molten image. They exchanged their glory for the image of a grass-eating bullock. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. They forgot the God who had saved them, who had done great deeds in Egypt, wondrous deeds in the land of Ham, terrible things at the Red Sea. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Then he spoke of exterminating them. But Moses, his chosen one, withstood him in the breach to turn back his destructive wrath. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. We all rise to honor the Holy Gospel. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading is taken from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews, If I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is not true. But there is another who testifies on my behalf. And I know that the testimony he gives on my behalf is true. You sent emissaries to John, and he testified to the truth. I do not accept human testimony, but I say this so that you may be saved. He was a burning and shining lamp, and for a while you were content to rejoice in his light. But I have testimony greater than John's. The works that the Father gave me to accomplish, these works that I perform, testify on my behalf that the Father has sent me. Moreover, the Father who sent me has testified on my behalf, but you have never heard His voice, you have not seen His form. You do not have His word remaining in you. Because you do not believe in the one whom he has sent, you search the scriptures 
because you think you have eternal life through them. Even they testify on my behalf. But you do not want to come to me to have life. I do not accept human praise. Moreover, I know that you do not have the love of God in you. I came in the name of my Father, but you do not accept me. Yet if another comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe when you accept praise from one another and do not seek the praise that comes from the only God? Do not think that I will accuse you before the Father. The one who will accuse you is Moses, in whom you have placed your hope. For if you had believed Moses, you would have believed me, because he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? My dear brothers and sisters, this is the gospel, the good news of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The gospel reading for today is like a court trial. Our Lord Jesus is his own attorney. He does not have any defense attorney. Jesus himself defends himself. The accusation of the Jews, blasphemy. Jesus is making himself equal to God. But in so many words in the gospel today, the Lord proves his divine origin. This, my dear brothers and sisters, is what happened during the first Holy Week before the judges in front of him, the Jewish leaders during his time. Today we continue with yesterday's dialogue or conversation or like an argument between the Lord and the Jewish religious leaders. Our Lord asserts that He comes from the Father and He does only what the Father requires. He does only the works of the Father. In the Gospel reading for today, our Lord Jesus gives a list of witnesses, a list of evidence, a list of proofs that He comes from God. Our Lord reaffirms that God Himself is the witness to the truth of all that Jesus says. And in the Gospel today, there are four ways by which God witnesses to Jesus. Number one, the testimony of John the Baptist. Although it was only a human testimony, John the Baptist testified in the name of the Lord. And John the Baptist also, during his public ministry, proved and testified about the divine origin of Jesus. The second proof, the works of Jesus give clear testimony of the divine origin of all that Jesus does. The miracles, especially the miracles of healing and feeding and teaching. The Lord says in the Gospel, the works that the Father gave me to accomplish, these works that I perform testify on my behalf that the Father has sent me. The third proof or evidence, the Father Himself has given testimony, although that has not been seen directly by some of the Jews. Remember that instance when there was a voice from heaven that says, This is my Son, the Beloved. Listen to Him. And that is the voice of the Father. And the fourth and last evidence, a careful reading of the scriptures will show that they give testimony to Jesus. That is why the Lord says, You search the scriptures 
because you think you have eternal life through them. Even the scriptures testify on my behalf, but you do not want to come to me to have life. That is why at the end of today's gospel, our Lord mentions Moses. Jesus will not accuse them before his father, Moses, in whom the Jewish leaders claim to believe, will be their accuser. And the Lord says, If you have believed Moses, you would have believed me, because even Moses wrote about me. So dear brothers and sisters, these are the testimonies. This is the list of evidence, the list of proof to proclaim and to describe and to claim that Jesus has a divine origin. But the Jews would not listen. And to make the long story short, this sham of a trial will end up in his crucifixion on the cross on the first Good Friday. Amen. Prayers of the Faithful Too often we stray from the ways of the Lord. Let us ask Him for the strength to live lives of faith. Let our response be, Father, help our unbelief. Father, help our unbelief. That Christian everywhere may be more fervent in prayer during this Lenten season. We pray. Father, help our unbelief. That unbelievers may listen to God's word and be brought to salvation. We pray. Father, help our unbelief. That present uncertainties in the church may be resolved by an increase of faith. We pray. Father, help our unbelief. That the poor, the sick, and the handicapped may see God's presence in their lives by support of their families and friends. We pray. Father, help our unbelief. For our civil and political leaders, that the Holy Spirit may guide them to make sound and swift policy decisions to fight this public health crisis and come to the aid of those lacking in basic necessities of life and devise social and economic solutions for the welfare of the citizenry. We also pray and thank for the ordinary people who find ways to help the least and the less among the society. May the true Bayanian spirit prevail among all of us. We pray. Father, help our unbelief. That the dead may reach their eternal home with the help of our prayers. We pray. Father, Father help, help our, our unbelief. unbelief. Father, enlighten us through the Holy Spirit that we may openly profess our faith through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that what we offer in sacrifice may cleanse us in our frailty from every evil and always grant us your protection. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us now give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal feasts with a joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, you are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread. He gave it to the disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Again, he gave you thanks and praise gave the chalice to the disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in my memory. The mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, O Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread all over the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Onesto, our Bishop. Remember your servants, Father Louis Lapus, SVD, Juana Pinto, Piano, 
Gloria Aceron Punsalan, whom you have called from this world to yourself, grant that they who were united with your Son in a death like His may also be one with Him in His resurrection. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the apostles and saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, with Him, in Him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray for an increase of faith as we pray the Our Father together. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our days. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety and fear, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. You said to the apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Greet one another with a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. My dear friends, this is Jesus who comes from the Father. The Lamb of God who takes away our sins and the sin of the world, happy are those invited to receive Him. Lord, Lord I, am I am not, not worthy, worthy that, that you, should you should enter under, under my roof, roof but Lord, only say the word and, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray.
May this sacrament we have received purify us, we pray, O Lord, and grant your servants freedom from all blame, that those bound by a guilty conscience may glory in the fullness of heavenly remedy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oratio Imperata. Merciful and compassionate Father, we confess our sins and we humbly come to you to find forgiveness and life. We come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Bless our efforts to use the medicines developed to end the pandemic in our country and the whole world. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted, may they be restored to health, protect those who care for them, grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Saint Joseph, Saint Raphael the Archangel, San Roque, San Lorenzo Ruiz, San Pedro Calungsod, Saints Arnold Jansen and Joseph Renadimitz. Please be seated for, for some announcements. Our schedule of Masses and other activities are as follows. Daily Masses, Mondays to Saturdays, 6.30 a.m. and 6 p.m. Sundays, 6, 8, 10, and 11.30 a.m. and 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. Confessions are ev every Saturdays at 5 p.m. and on Sundays at 11 a.m. and 5 p.m. Lenten activities. Stations of the Cross is every Friday at 5 p.m. Palm Sunday will be on April 10. We will follow the regular mass schedule as shown on the screen. Schedules of whole, other schedule of the Holy Week activities is shown on the screen and will be posted on our Facebook page and bulletin boards outside the shrine. The Fast to Feed a Child, a Lenten fundraising campaign of the Hapag Asa Integrated Nutrition Program, whose aim is to help feed the hungry children, is calling for your support. For those who wish to help feed the hungry children, envelopes are available at the back. You may leave your envelopes at the collection boxes or drop them during the offertory. Once again, we thank you for your support. God bless you all. Reverend Father Ronnie Crisostomo, SVD, Shrine Rector. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. I'd like to greet everybody a pleasant good morning, especially our benefactors, donors, and friends not only in the Philippines, but in different countries all over the world. Magandang umaga, magandang gabi, magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. I'd like to part in particular thank the following names without mentioning the family names, 
Maraming salamat sa inyong pinadalang tulong. Imelda, Remigio, Pamela, Marilyn, Samuel, Aurora, Pamela, Lali Jane, Marilyn, Samuel again, Ronaldo, Roland and Emmy, maraming salamat, Claudette, Alan, Desa, Rosan, Henidina, Rudy, Janelle and Ivan, Maria Lourdes and Elizabeth. To all of you, we would like to acknowledge your gra with gratitude your generosity and kindness and your thoughtfulness to help our seminarians. And I'd also like to thank the following names, Viusi and Mercy, Maria Teresa, Janice, Maria Lourdes, Ami, Ruby, and Belen. To all of you also, marami pong salamat. I'd like to take this opportunity to continue to appeal for help, assistance, the form of financial assistance uh, to, for our seminarians here at Christ the King. Ipinapakita namin sa inyo ang aming bank account details. Kung nais ninyong tumulong, magbigay ng tulong sa ating mga seminarista, we are showing our bank account details with Banco de Oro. Uh, bank account name is Divine Word Mission Seminary Inc. And the account number is 000 2201912 We will appreciate your financial help, your assistance and your prayers for our seminarians because we need them. And uh, we are also keeping two GCash numbers. You may also use any of these two GCash numbers that are being flashed in front of you on your screen as well as our email address. At this point, I would also like to announce again our Lenten online recollection that will be held on Friday, April 8, from 7 in the evening until 8.30 or something in the evening. In front of you, we are also showing our Lenten recollection poster for your guidance. Kung paano ninyo mapapanood, we have invited several SVDs, missionaries, who will give testimonies about their life as missionaries in relation to the Lenten season. So please uh, set aside some time on April 8 at 7 in the evening. This is open to all, especially to the friends, benefactors, donors, and sponsors of our seminarians. And finally, may I know if June is here. Oh, welcome to Christ the King, Jun. Sawadi Cup. He is helping us in Christ the King. He is one of your benefactors. Jun, tumayo ka nga. Stand up, Jun. Ayaw niya. Let's give Jun a round of applause. He works in Thailand as a teacher. And he helps you. He's one of our benefactors. June, let us all stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. May the Holy Triad God live and reign in